Thank you, Lord, for still upon us this blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom, now and ever into the age of ages. Amen. <clears throat> Today is the third Sunday of the blessed month of Hatur. Um, and as we we're saying, the main focus of this month is the word of God and its power in the heart, and the response of the heart uh, towards the power of God, <clears throat> which is in his word. Um, <clears throat> and more specifically, last Sunday and the Sunday before, the gospel was about the parable of the sower and the seed, right? And we already went into that. And the next two weeks, so this Sunday and next Sunday, um, is more focused on uh, what is the requirements of the disciple or the cost of love or the cost of discipleship or counting the cost. Um, <clears throat> and so today the Lord um, compares, as you probably uh, remember, um, the love of God towards everything else. And even though we love um, our family and our friends and others, in comparison with the love of God, it's nothing. And that's why the Lord uses the, the translation of the word that he uses is hate. <clears throat> even though, as we know, um, that goes against the, the gospel to, to hate uh, people. <clears throat> Um, but this is how the, the fathers uh, explain it uh, for us. And actually, the Lord, um, in, in the Gospel according to St. Matthew, describes it more in detail, where he says, he who loves more any of these more than me is not worthy of me. <clears throat> so um, uh, the theme of the sower actually continues where we focus on um, the, the stony ground, the second uh, type where it says the Lord describes, it says they have no root in themselves, and so they endure only for a time, because when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. <clears throat> and so, in the gospel, we know that the Lord had many followers, but he had very few disciples. Many people followed him for, for various reasons, and they were enthralled, and intrigued and blessed um, to notice the miracles and the healings and the signs and the wonders and the teachings and the compassion and the wisdom and the power of God. <clears throat> so they followed him. And many Christians also um, follow the Lord because of all the great things and all the power and all the blessings that we receive from him. <clears throat> but the Lord today says that's not the entire road. Um, many people stopped following the Lord um, and they didn't continue to be his disciples. <clears throat> Why? Um, well, um, there's a few reasons. And if you read the gospel according to St. John chapter 6, you'll see what happened. At the, actually, um, so one of the reasons is because they only, uh, in the gospel according to St. John chapter 6, we also read it another time during the year, um, several times, but after the Lord performed the 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 multi, the, he, the, um, the blessing of, uh, for the multitude of the five loaves and the two fish, um, the people came to him the next day seeking the same thing. And he told them what? <clears throat> you seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and, and were filled. <clears throat> and so they came to the Lord for the free lunch, right? Um, and... And then when he started to speak to them about the sacrament of the mystery of communion and he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him and, and you will have and the, my body that I give is for the life of the world. They couldn't accept this. So that's the second reason. So the first reason is because um, we're only looking at the external um, reward that we get for being with God. It's a good incentive. It's a good first step. But um, that's not what the entire Christian life entails. Um, <clears throat> so the second reason is because we can't accept the teachings. Um, they're too difficult for us. So when he said, he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood, abides in me and I in him, the people responded saying, this is a hard saying, who can accept? And the gospel continues to say, St. John continues to say, many people followed him no more after that. <clears throat> um, so sometimes when we feel that the teachings of God 
or the, his commandments are burdensome, even though they are not. Um, but when it appears to us burdensome externally, then we say, no, this is not for me. I'm only going to go halfway with God. <clears throat> the, the last reason is probably the most difficult, and this is what the Lord focuses on today, um, to carry the cross. There's no Christianity without the cross. Um, and whether we're Christian or not, there's going to be suffering in our life. Um, and most people in society today, their main goal is to limit the suffering um, and to increase the joy and happiness and pleasantry of this world. <clears throat> but the Lord said, no, that's, that's not what you're here for. Um, and when people started, one scribe in the gospel, and according to St. Matthew, came to the Lord and said, I'll follow you wherever you go. And he said, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. <clears throat> to say, if you want to follow me, there's going to be suffering. There's a, something called the cross. Back then, the cross only had one definition, suffering, excruciating pain, humiliation. <clears throat> and so imagine many people in the beginning of the gospel today, many people were following the Lord. He had multitudes follow him. And instead of a normal um, a person who is not a, a person who is of the world would say, "Yes, I have a lot of followers. I need to increase them. So I need to encourage them and say, if you follow me, I'll give you more things. You'll be more happier and more joyful and less worried about the things of the world. Just follow me." <clears throat> but instead, the Lord said a difficult saying for them to hear, which was the truth, and many people stopped following him after that. So many people assume that Christianity is, is just very easy and a, a bed of roses. And if, if I follow Christ, my life is going to be um, problem-free. It's like, no, <laughs> there's many problems in our life. But when we carry the cross for Christ's sake and with Christ, then the burdens are lifted. <clears throat> and and uh, yes, we carry the burden, but joyfully. And, and we find the joy and the power and the blessing behind it. So the, the, the problem is not removed, but it's transformed. <clears throat> and so um, today Christ is saying, there is no Christianity without the cross, as Buna Bishwai Kiam of Blessed Memory used to say. <clears throat> there will be suffering. There will be difficult times in your life. And the question is, when they come, not if, how will you respond? What, what will you do? Um, give up? Deny the Lord? Blame him, leave like the followers did. No, this is too difficult. Um, God is asking too much of me. Um, let me figure out how to solve this myself. Um, and unfortunately, people who do that um, add sin to sin and <clears throat> get actually more um, further from the life that they see. <clears throat> um, so how do we do this? Uh, the Lord said in order... Um, to forsake all, we have to um, follow the one who, who gave up all for our sins. <clears throat> and um, as, as one uh, monk put it, um, as Christ was born to die, the Christian must die to be born again. Um, and so this is the concept. This is why, uh, and it's related to love. So that's why in, in the church uh, today, we're focusing on the heart. But the heart, in order to love, has to sacrifice, has to give, has to suffer. And so the Christian who is constantly dying to daily, like St. Paul says, is loving daily. <clears throat> and um, as I'm sure I mentioned this before, but in your heart, you say, the fathers say there's a throne and there's a cross, right? There's a crown of thorns and there's a crown of glory. And... We have the choice of what to put that crown on. Do we put the crown of thorns on Christ and we take the crown of glory? Or do you take the crown of thorns and you give him the crown of glory? <clears throat> do you put yourself on the throne and let Christ be crucified? He's already crucified, but um, the more we sin, the more we realize that, um, or the more that we sin, uh, the, the more we need the power of the crucified Lord to cleanse us. <clears throat> so, what am I doing? 
um, am I striving to be to put, push Christ off the throne and to put myself on? Um, because St. Paul says those who are Christ's have what crucified the flesh with its lusts and desires. <clears throat> um, and so we shouldn't see the cross as just suffering. Externally, yes, there's suffering, there's pain, it's hard. Um, uh, but inwardly, it is the power of God and the joy. Like the Lord went to the cross willingly. Did he suffer on the cross? Some people say, no, he didn't suffer, he's God. No, he suffered. He, he took a body like ours in order to suffer and to be able to die. <clears throat> he could have. Could he have taken the pain away? Of course. Did he? No. <laughs> um, this was his joy to suffer on our behalf. <clears throat> so um, the problem is that we focus on the throne too much and not enough on the cross. Um, but and we forget which one comes first. Sometimes as Christians say, "Yes, I want that throne." I want the kingdom of heaven. It's, it's a good desire. But we forget, in order to get there, we need the cross. Right? And, and the cross has to come first, and the throne has to come next. <clears throat> um, and what we don't realize, though, is that when we put God first, and when we accept the cross willingly and joyfully, even though it means a lot of pain and suffering, the cross and the throne become one. Um, <clears throat> and uh, that does not happen unless we remember to do it all for his sake. So when we put him first and realize, okay, I'll suffer, I'll do anything for the Lord, no matter what it, it means, um, then the cross becomes easier. Um, it feels lighter, even though it's the same cross. Um, <clears throat> so, um, and even the Lord in the gospel, when he, he asks or prophesies or tells us what we need to do for his sake, it's all about suffering. For example, in, in just in the gospel, according to St. Matthew, I'll just start reading the verses where he says the phrase, for my sake. Right. So he says, when they revile you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely, for my sake. Right. You'll be brought before governors and rulers for my sake. You'll be hated by all for my name's sake. He who loses his life for my sake will find it. Everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or fathers or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake, my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold. So we just have to remember that that phrase, for my sake. And how do we how, how do we swallow it to carry the cross for his sake? We remember that on the cross he did it. For our sake, right? Abu Nubishoy came of blessed memory. He always used to look at the cross, and especially in his suffering um, when he was enduring um, sickness for, for many, many years. And he used to, I think I mentioned this before, but he, he used to contemplate on the cross. And one day during a lot of suffering, he wrote the words, for my sake, and, and put it right under the cross to remind himself. So when we do that, then the, the cross becomes easier to carry. Um, <clears throat> and we shouldn't fool ourselves. Simon Peter, um, uh, although he's a great saint, um, in the in the gospel, according to St. John, um, he said, I can, why can't I follow you now, Lord? I, I'll lay, my down, lay down my life for your sake. He, he was misunderstanding um, how much power or endurance he had to carry the cross. He said, I can do it. The Lord said, no. Um, not now. You're gonna, are you going to lay down your life for my sake? Most assuredly, I say to you, before the rooster crows, um, you will deny me three times. So let's not de deceive ourselves. It's hard. It's not easy to carry the cross for his sake. Um, but nevertheless, this is our goal. Um, <clears throat> and so the difficult things become easier when we remember I'm doing this for his sake, not for so-and-so, not for my own sake, but for the Lord, because he did all and gave up all for, for my sake. <clears throat> so this is the daily diet. Um, and sometimes we look at the lives of the saints and the great sacrificial acts and the heroic deeds that they did. Say, so this is carrying the cross. But that's not where it starts. That's, that's where it ends, right? But it starts with 
Okay, just simply try to love God more and others more and yourself less. Stop thinking of your, yourself and then you can begin to love. Um, humble, humble yourself before others, before God. Bless those who curse you. Follow the commandments at the, at the, at the best of your ability. Um, and then God will start giving you the grace to be able to carry the cross, cross better and stronger and more joyful. Um, <clears throat> so my job is to humble myself. God's job is, is to, to raise me up. My job is to carry the cross. He will grant me the power of his resurrection. My job is to dig the hole and to humble myself and to go lower and lower. And his job is to build the tower. Um, like the example of the parable the Lord gave of building the tower today. <clears throat> the stronger the foundation, the deeper it goes, the higher the, the tower can be. Um, the deeper the roots of the tree, the taller um, the, the tree can reach to the sky. The more I give up, the more he gives me. <clears throat> and so this is what we call um, the gift that keeps giving is the one of sacrifice. Um, so the more we give God, and give to others, the more God gives us. Um, and this is the grace that, that the Lord bestows on those who are willing and are to carry the cross like the cross goes. <clears throat> so God is asking us, carry the cross so I can lift up the, the burdens of, of the life for you. Um, I, will, I will allow you to endure these difficult things, but no longer will you see the cross as something to run away from but something to run to because the more we run to it the more we have interaction and blessing and joy with the more we find Christ um, <clears throat> uh, and this is a hard concept to understand but the more we try and test these these words that the church have given us that the Lord has given to us himself the more we say yes it's true um, <clears throat> don't be deceived by what uh, the world tells us but what the Lord tells us. May he give us the ability to expand our hearts so that we can love more by desiring to follow him and to forsake all for, for his sake, um, that he may bestow upon us blessing and blessing. Um, and glory be to him now and